Well, that's pretty cool. Eastern Continental Divide. Right here on the AT, going through a prescribed burn area. You can see the line where the burn stops. Um, right up to the trail, actually. And you can smell it. It's hard to show the burn. I guess that's better. Close up, you can see it. And the smell just penetrates everything. Sorry, too fast, I know. It's really weird walking through with burn on both sides. Feels like Armageddon or some sort of dystopian reality. Walking through here makes me think how resilient nature is. And because we're part of nature, we're resilient too. You know, we can take so much and still come back to life. The burn smell makes me think of pollution and not necessarily related to the the prescribed burn because I know that's for the health of the forest but in regards to our environment and the things that we put out there and it reminds me of the smell of the flowers earlier and how we've tried to chemically reproduce that smell for fragrances and candles and soaps and how toxic that is and you know, I know there's science pointing to the fact that those fragrances are neurotoxins and carcinogens, and I don't know if that's true. Um, I'm not a scientist. But if it is, if it's possible that that is true, even just a little bit, why are we doing that? Why are we buying uh, things that could potentially, even potentially, have an adverse effect on our health? For what reason? To smell? You know, go outside, smell the flowers. Um, very few through hikers bring any type of, uh, well, first of all, they don't bring fragrance, but even deodorant. <laughs> and uh, our bodies just have a natural smell to them. Some would say pleasant and others would say unpleasant. Uh, we have pheromones, that's what, you know, attracts us to one another and we cover it up and even some of those scents use the pheromones right to to replicate that but we we have it naturally we have so many things naturally that we don't need to chemically reproduce anything it's all right here all of it everything we need This section is so green, it's such a contrast. Today has been full of contrast. It's such a beautiful hike. I am really glad to not be climbing anymore and the descent has not been too bad for my knees. It was rocky at first. Uh, now there's just some little rocks. And uh, I don't know if the rest of the day is downhill. I'm guessing probably no, but for right now, I'm enjoying the descent. Oh, and these are the rocks. So these flat gray rocks, I see them here, but not so much uh, in the other areas. Seem to be a Virginia thing. And a totally different feel in through here. Pine needles and pine forests, the rich green, dark brown and the blue gray out there. The shade and the wind has been keeping things cool. 
I'm still sweating, but not too bad. I am almost to mile marker 10 for the day. And it's been probably one of my favorite days as far as terrain on trail. Um, but I'm ready to sit down for a moment. My feet hurt and it's really way past time for my shoes, but I won't get them until Friday. So I've got today and then four more days. Well, just had some trail magic. And that was a really nice surprise. Had some sort of uh, appetizer, some veggie, cream cheesy, olivey thing. And then also had taco salad. And then I had two hot sausages. I need protein. I didn't pack enough and I'm running out of food. So um, they were good. There was also some cards. So I got to send some notes to my family and homemade brownies. I'm really grateful. Still have another five miles to go. Seems like a long way, especially with a four and a half, well, yeah, four and a half mile water carry. It's 1.30, I'm gonna take it slowly and I'm going to climb over these rocks. Don't forget to look up. So there's a bridge out on this creek. And the option is to try to hop across it on the rocks or walk through it or take a bypass all the way around. So I'm gonna go down here and get my feet wet. Well, my feet are definitely soaked and I hope they dry by nighttime. I've passed by so many dry creek beds in this area. It seems like there's really no water anywhere and have had lots of water carries these last few days. Hard to know how much water to get for this, for camp tonight. I love having a lot of water, but it's a four and a half mile carry, all uphill. So I ended up carrying both my smart waters, uh, so a liter and three quarters, and then an additional liter. Let's see if that's enough. Since I um, feasted at Trail Magic, I don't have to worry about um, doing a warm dinner tonight. I'll probably just have a wrap or something. Um, but I do want water in the morning and I want coffee and oatmeal and water for tomorrow, um, tomorrow's hike. So I'm going to take it slow. You see what I see? It's a lizard. Runs right into that tree. Man, that was a big climb, especially with the water. And I'm about to put my butt on this bench for a minute. How convenient. Sat down for a minute, but then the flies and the bugs were biting the heck out of me. Not sure why, that wasn't very nice. So onward I go. I'm about half a mile, I think, from camp. Huh, you can see my shadow. Hi, everybody.
Anyway, um, on this rocky ridge, taking it slow. It's, I think it's 4.30, something like that. It's getting cooler. I'm surprised that after the two sausages and oh, all the stuff at the Trail Magic, I'm hungry. So I'm probably gonna make dinner when I get to camp. And originally I didn't think I'd need to. I do have some extra water, but it'll mean I won't have that for the morning, which should be fine. The wind feels awesome. I just hope it doesn't storm tonight um, too much. And it would be really great, just kind of putting it out there and let me manifest some stuff way if it didn't rain until after I was all packed up. Or at all, you know, there's always that option that it doesn't hot have to rain tomorrow.